Good evening. This is Radio Free Bichel. I'm Alphonse. Tonight, the meaning of witchcraft. Edward Evans Pritchard was a British anthropologist who, in the late 1920s and early 1930s, went to South Sudan and lived among the Azande people. And his work on their ideas of witchcraft have been extraordinarily influential. What the Azande believed was that witchcraft was all around. When they experienced everyday misfortunes, they blamed witchcraft. Evans Pritchard gives an example of a boy who goes for a walk in the woods. Now, he knows he has to be careful not to hurt his foot on stumps. But on this particular day, he makes a mistake. He hits his foot on a stump and it gashes him. And within a couple of days, it becomes infected. And that's when he and everybody else knows that he must have been bewitched. To hurt one's foot on a stump is normal, but for it to be infected is bad luck. And that kind of bad luck can only be caused by witches. Another example that he gives is about a grain storehouse. Now this grain storehouse is raised up on the ground on stilts. And those stilts can be eaten over time by termites. It's an ordinary occurrence, eventually, for grain storehouses to collapse if the legs have been eaten by termites. It's also normal for men, in the heat of the day, to sit under the storehouse for shade. But on this particular occasion, when the storehouse collapses, killing some of the people underneath, that's an extraordinary coincidence. It must be a result of witchcraft. Everybody knows it. That's how the Azande thought. But they didn't respond the way Christians, Europeans, Puritan, New Englanders did by trying to find witches and burn them or kill them. They didn't see witches as spawn of Satan. They actually saw witchcraft as something that was inherited. Boys inherited it from their fathers. Girls inherited it from their mothers. And it could actually be detected physically after death. If someone was suspected of being a witch, an autopsy by an expert could determine the truth. By examining the intestines and looking for specific kinds of black marks, they could confirm whether someone was a witch or confirm that they weren't. So, of course, virtually anybody could be a witch. Communities were full of witches. Anybody living among the Azande knew that some of their friends or neighbors, or even people in their family, might be witches. So, if your community is partly witches... You can't afford to just eliminate them. You can't afford to go to war against them. You have to find a way to get along. And that's what the Azande would do. They didn't go hunting for witches for no reason. No, they only went trying to find if they were being bewitched, if they had a particular problem, if it was clear that they were the victim of a witch. Then they would go, usually, to the poison oracle. The poison oracle would entail getting a chicken, and then naming suspects. And the suspects would be friends, neighbors, maybe sister wives, people who might be jealous or envious or have some kind of dislike for the person who is the victim. And then the chicken would be given poison. And depending on whether the chicken died, you would know whether that person was actually a witch. Now, the next step was not for the victim to go and confront the witch face to face. That was too risky. The witch might actually use his power to do something bad to the victim and the community couldn't afford that kind of confrontation. So instead, an intermediary was sent. The intermediary would take a wing from the chicken, and he'd place it in front of the door of the accused witch. And then he would call out the witch and tell him that the poison oracle had identified him as bewitching the victim. And he would ask him to stop. Imagine if you were in that situation. You believe in witchcraft. There's evidence of it. After all, when people die, we can find out physically whether they were witches. And other witches have been found before. People are bewitched all the time. It's an ordinary part of life. But when you are accused, you're shocked. You never thought you were a witch. But maybe you are. Maybe you inherited that witchcraft capability, and although you don't know about it, although you don't get together with the other witches in the dark of night in order to bewitch people, maybe you actually thought bad thoughts about the victim, and your capacity for witchcraft meant that the person was actually hurt. That could be it. And if you say, I'm not a witch, you know nobody will believe you, because the poison oracle never lies. So instead what you say is, I didn't intend to do anything bad to the victim, and I'm certainly not going to think anything bad about them now. 
And then there's a ritual that you would do to indicate that as a witch, you're going to stop. You would take water into your mouth and you'd blow it over the chicken wing. And then the issue was resolved. Everybody's happy. The victim has an explanation for what happened to him. He knows why he got hurt. And the witch has discharged his part of the problem as well. The case is closed. The community continues on. Witchcraft here is performing a very important function. It's providing a social explanation when things go wrong. When something bad happens to you, when bad things happen to good people, it's not very satisfying to say it's just bad luck and there's no reason. Human beings want a reason. We feel cut adrift if there's no reason. In fact, the idea of there being no reason is the foundation of H.P. Lovecraft's horror fiction. The idea of cosmic horror is that there are no gods. The universe simply does not care about humanity. And Lovecraft and many of his readers found that terrifying. Well, the Azande have a solution. There are witches. They live among us. They cause our misfortunes, and we have a remedy. We have a way for dealing with that problem that does not disrupt the community. Evans Pritchard said that in his time among the Azande, living as much as he could like them, he found that the material, everyday evidence of witchcraft was so overwhelming that he started to believe it himself. He had difficulty reminding himself that, in fact, there are no witches, that witchcraft is not real. Now, I know a lot of modern people would say, oh, no, that's just myth and superstition. But I I want to just give one other little piece of evidence that the Azande were not irrational at all. For when they wanted to be absolutely sure about what the poison oracle was saying, they would do it twice. But the key is they expected the result with the second chicken to be the opposite of the first. That's a very clever way of double-checking to make sure that the mechanism really is working as an oracle. And it's not simply that the poison is too powerful and would kill any chicken, for example. These people were thoughtful. They were intelligent. They had evidence around them all the time that witchcraft happened. And it solved a social and psychological problem. How are we so different? René Girard, in fact, in his work on the scapegoat, is partly inspired by Evans Pritchard's work on the Azande. Girard describes how the scapegoat ritual addresses a similar problem. The scapegoat provides a social explanation for why bad things happen, and it provides a ritual for solving it. Although, obviously, it's a much more violent and destructive ritual than the Azande tradition of killing a chicken and then asking somebody to stop. Given all of this, should we think that we are immune? After all, we have the same need for closure. When something really bad happens, not to say simply that it's just random, but to have a rational social explanation. When we talk about conspiracy theories, that's what we're talking about. But who's to say that our society in general does not accept things similar to conspiracy theories in order to give social explanations for bad things happening? This episode actually leads into a discussion of that in the next episode. In effect, this is the third in a series of four episodes talking about race and racism in America. The first episode talked about the invention of white privilege. The second gave a critique of the sociological idea of social construction to try to show how social constructions are actually anchored in real practices and interactions and relationships. And witchcraft, among the Azande, is exactly that. Witchcraft isn't real in the sense that human beings can bewitch other people, but it is real in the sense that it's actually a phenomenon in Azande society that changes the relationships among people, that dictates that one participate in certain rituals, that solves certain problems for the society, for individuals, for the community. In that sense, witchcraft actually is real. It really is socially constructed in the way I talked about in the previous episode. And next episode, I'm going to take that and talk specifically about race. This isn't my idea. This connection was drawn by a couple of Afro-American scholars, Barbara and Karen Fields, sisters, who wrote a book called Racecraft. And that's going to be my topic next time. This is Alphonse for Radio Free Bichelle.
www.bezel.ca. Good night.